This is a redo of the discussion on the area between two curves problem as it applies to the beginning of our Calculus 2 course. It's an old problem that we already know the solution of in certain circumstances from Calculus 1. We have a function y equal f of x which we presume to be positive at least for the x values between a and b, the ones we're interested in, we have another function, y equal g of x, whose function values are also positive, and the values for g of x are below those of f of x. In this situation, we want to calculate the area between the two curves, starting at x equal a, ending at x equal b. If the situation is as described, then an obvious thing to do would be to calculate the area under the f function all the way from the x-axis to the graph of the f function. This would give you what you want, except that it includes the area under the g function, which you don't want. So you could calculate this area and subtract this area to get what you want. Since the two functions, f and g, are positive separately, their integrals will give you this area. So you could integrate f from a to b with respect to x, integrate g in the same way, and then subtract them. By properties of integrals that we studied back in Calc 1, you can then rewrite this as a single integral in this way. That whole line of reasoning, though, revolves around the fact that f and g are both positive and that f is bigger than g in function value. Is it really necessary that f and g be positive? The answer to that is no. We'll see why in a moment. Is it necessary that f be larger than g in function value? The answer to that is yes. We'll see why that is in a moment as well. In a section to come, we're going to need something about number lines. So it seems silly to bring this up at the moment, but it's not a difficult thing. On the number line, which I might think of as being the x-axis, a less than b means that a is to the left of b. So on a number line, since 1 is to the left of 5, 1 is less than 5. Also, negative 10 is to the left of 5, so negative 10 is less than 5 as well. People sometimes get a little bit confused about that because 10 is bigger than 5, but it's not 10 we're talking about here. It's negative 10. Of course, you could make the same argument for vertical number lines, like the y-axis. On such a number line, a less than b means a is lower than b. And as before, 5, 3, 3 is below 5, so 3 is less than 5. 5, negative 10, negative 10 is less than 5. These seemingly nonsensical observations have a significance for us. I'm going to be interested in calculating the vertical height of a rectangle. So I'm going to imagine three variations on a theme here. I'm going to have some vertical height. The lowest y-coordinate is 1, and the largest is 6. The distance vertically from 1 to 6 is 6 minus 1 equals 5. It's the larger number minus the smaller number. If you take those numbers and lower both of them by 3 units, the location that used to be 6 is now 3, and the location that used to be 1 
is now negative 2. One of the numbers is positive, but the other one's negative. And what I want to observe is it doesn't make any difference in calculating the distance. Larger number, 3, minus smaller number, negative 2, is 3 minus negative 2, 3 plus 2, which is 5. The distance is still being calculated correctly, even though the numbers are not both positive. Starting with your original picture, lower the entire interval that you're looking at by 7 units. 6 gets moved down to negative 1, and 1 gets moved down to negative 6. Now, both of the coordinates are negative, and yet I still want to be able to calculate the length, the vertical length, the height of this object. The larger number is negative 1, because it's above the other one, minus the smaller number, negative 6. This would be negative 1 plus 6, which is still 5. So in calculating heights of things, I don't care if the y-coordinates are both positive or both negative, or one is positive and one is negative. It makes no difference. I always get the distance by larger one minus smaller one. So we're going to return to our area between curves problem. I'm drawing it as we did before, assuming that f and g are both positive in terms of the picture, but as we've just seen, it's not going to matter. Take the range of x values. In this case, this is the range of independent variable values, which is x. Divide that range of x values up into many smaller sub-pieces. The width of each one of these pieces is going to be delta x number i. And if we concentrate on one of these chunks, it will be delta xi across the bottom. We'll select some representative x number ci, and the heights of the beginning and end of the situation on the y-axis will be g at ci and f of ci. If I make delta xi small enough, this little chunk is roughly speaking going to be a rectangle, and its area is approximately the vertical height multiplied by delta xi number 1. Now I think back to those seemingly nonsensical things. The vertical height is larger y number minus smaller one, so that's going to be f evaluated at ci minus g evaluated at ci times delta xi. This is an approximation to the area that goes with sub-interval number i. We then have the sum of these contributions, giving me an estimate for the total area. And to make the estimate perfect, we take the limit as all of the delta xi's tend to zero. Since the norm of the partition is the largest of these delta xi's, if it tends to zero, all the delta xi's tend to zero. So the area that we're after is the limit of the sum of a function value for h, if h is f minus g, times delta xi. This is the definition of something. This is the definition of the definite integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x with respect to x. So naturally, we get the same answer that we got back in Calc 1 by doing the subtraction of areas method. 
but I am not subtracting areas here. I'm thinking of taking the region, chopping it up into a bunch of little rectangles, figure the area of each rectangle, add them all up, and then take the limit, which turns the problem into this integral. I get the same result that we got back in Calc 1, but I didn't get it by thinking that way at all. So, as we said, we no longer care if the f and g functions are positive or negative or zero. It is irrelevant to us. I do care that one of them is above the other one, so that f of x minus g of x here will be positive. Heights are positive. They're never negative. So, obviously, we need to work a few examples of this, because otherwise it would be silly. So we're going to look at this situation. The top of the region is going to be the curve y equals x squared plus 1. In our description previously, this is the f of x function. The bottom part of the region is going to be bounded by y equals negative x. That's going to be the g of x function. I'm going to begin at x equals 2. That would be the a. And we'll end at x equals 4. That would be the b. And I'd like to calculate the area between these two curves for x being 2 to 4. Observe that x squared plus 1 is always bigger than negative x on that region. These y-coordinates are above these y-coordinates, so this is our setup. On the other hand, if we were doing this as in Calc 1, the fact that these y-coordinates are negative would be very disturbing to us. Here, we've figured out that that doesn't matter. The area of one of my little rectangles is its vertical height, which is a positive number, times the horizontal extent of it, which we're calling delta x number i. How do I do heights? It's the bigger y number minus the smaller y number. Within subinterval number i, select some convenient number, call it ci. The y that goes with y equal x squared plus 1 will be ci squared plus 1 minus whatever the smaller y coordinate is. When x is ci, y is negative of ci. So here I'll have ci squared plus 1 minus the negative of ci times dx. After combining terms, the area of that one strip is approximately the number ci squared plus ci plus 1 multiplied by the number delta x. The total area is the sum of all of those areas of individual vertical strips. This is an approximation to the total area to make it perfect make all of the delta xi's tend to zero, so you'll have the limit of the sum of some quantity involving ci multiplied by delta x. This is the definition of the integral from 2 to 4, x squared plus x plus 1, integrated with respect to x. What we've done is the logic part. We've figured out using these vertical rectangles, what we should do in terms of an integral. And then once you've done that, to finish the problem, calculate the value of that integral. Of course, that's a non-problem. An antiderivative is 1 3rd x cubed plus 1 half x squared plus x. You have to evaluate that at x equal 4, evaluate it at x equals 2, and then subtract. In the end, the answer turns out to be 
26.6 repeating. That's the area between the two curves. Just as in Calc 1, there are potentially some complications here. The graph of F might start off higher than the graph of G, and then later cut below it. You have to be very careful. We don't care anymore if F and G are positive, negative, or whatever, but we do care about the height of our rectangle being bigger Y number minus smaller Y number. Here, F is bigger and G is smaller, but here, G is bigger and F is smaller. So if I attempt to do that by writing down just the integral from A to B of F minus G, I've made a mistake. I've added up some rectangles, but I've also added up some negative of area of rectangle. So that's no good. You'll remember what you do is you find out where they cross each other. On this chunk, F is above G. On this chunk, G is above F. And then you deal with the two pieces separately. Both of those will give you areas. The first will give you the area of this piece. The second will give you the area of that piece. And then you add those two areas together. To be explicit about it, in the first region, the height on the rectangles will be the F value minus the G value. This will be true for X between A and C. C is the X coordinate of the crossover point. On the second chunk, the height of the rectangle will be G value minus F value. This will be true from x equals c up to the end of the interval. The second area is the integral from c to b of g of x minus f of x with respect to x. I had previously had a video up about this topic, but looking back on it, since it was one of my very early ones, it was real bad. It was badly lit. It was hard to look at. I'm hoping that this redo will be of some use to people. I hope people have an understanding of this now. That's all I wanted to talk about in this one. I'll talk to you again soon. Previously, I had a version of this discussion. It was one of my very early videos. Don't look at that video. It's pretty bad. It was very hard to look at because the lighting was bad. And I'd not yet gotten used to the idea of talking and pointing out things and running the video equipment all at the same time. So overall, it really was very bad. I hope that this is a little better. I wanted to put this up because several people had requested it. We will talk again soon.